We built these ships. Dredged these canals. In the San Francisco they never knew existed. This is our home. The challenge I found with this film is that Joe's vision for the film was very surreal and um, really elevated, and I was really excited about that. But at the same time, it's important to me that the story feels honest and true and that people can relate to it. So I think there was always finding this balance of making sure the audience trusted us in the story we were telling, but also making it like a magical experience for them. So we kind of had a palette we liked. We liked a lot of primary colors. Red was obviously a very strong color because it's Jimmy's shirt that he wears the entire film. And then the city itself has a lot of green because it's a very green, lush city. So red and green really came through in the film a lot. It was definitely a conscious decision to make the house feel warmer and more inviting. Um, there's a lot of times where light shafts are pouring in through a window. Sometimes that was literally us just planning it for a certain time of day where we knew the sun would be coming through a window. And other times we were able to sneak a light outside one of the windows to push light through a window. But I think it was important that the house felt inviting and warm. Um, at the same time, it has this sort of grandeur that nothing else in the film has, and I think it was important to emphasize that. So we shot the house with a lot of really wide angle lenses that honestly I normally would be terrified to use, but somehow it really worked with the geometry of the house. Uh, we shot in the Alexa Mini with the uh, Zeiss Master Primes and uh, Ingenue Optimo 24-290. to um, And we pretty much only used the zoom if we were doing a zoom shot. For the rest of it, we used the Primes. And I love the Master Primes because they're sharp and clean, but they still have life to them. And there's like this nice contrast. So I think the mix of having this kind of I mean, a very strong LUT in camera and a very strong color correction approach. It was nice to have a really clean, crisp lens that just like really resolved face as well. And even in wide shots, you could shoot wide open and it was still really sharp. I tried to use mostly wider lenses and also not change lenses too often. And I think what that does is it forces us to pick the camera position as opposed to the lens, which I really like, so that the audience kind of develops this perspective. What I like is that you build meaning through repetition. So you're kind of seeing this similar shot throughout the film, but in different places at different points in their life. And uh, you kind of actually see the progression more in a way because it's that the lensing is consistent. Joe really pushed us to keep the camera alive and to keep um, the momentum with these guys. And there was a lot of montage sequences in the film, which I feel very comfortable with, but it was, uh, it was really challenging because when we're shooting on such a tight schedule, montages are often the first thing to get cut because you have to change locations for every single shot and keep moving along. And so that was a big challenge. But I think what we did is we created kind of a language of camera movement that we could use. You know, the simplest being, you know, a three or four foot slider that we always had with us that if we just wanted a little creep with the camera, something slow and more brooding, we could do that. Um, and then we had some longer dolly shots, like the opening dolly shot of the film was a 140 foot long dolly shot that my key group Jason Noel set up and it was just probably one of the most ambitious things we did on the entire shoot and it was also the first shoot, shot on the first day of shooting, which was insane, um, at sunrise. Oh man, area rental was very uh, integral to this film. I mean, I've done, I think, most, if not all, of the films I've done have been with Airy Rental, and they've been so supportive of my work, um, both logistically and creatively. And I think what really makes the difference is that I feel like I'm able to explain my creative process and why I need what I need. And um, they listen to that, and they support that. And not only do they support me as a cinematographer, they support the whole entire production and Joe as a director. And I think that's what's really important is that they believe in the film and they're really excited to hear about the film and what it's about and support it well after it's done. And I think that's really special that I feel like, you know, we're trying to make art and we're making it in an industry that is really run by a lot of big money and a lot of big decisions. And it's nice to know that you have people who are in it for the right reasons and care about the filmmaking process and care about the stories that we're telling. And I really feel that with them. So that I think is what draws me to them the most. Yeah.